Today, I'm going to talk to you about the phrases that the narcissist uses to gaslight you. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So let me start by saying the term gaslighting or gaslight originated with this play that came out in 1938 and later became a movie version uh, in 1944 called Gaslight. And the, the basis of the story is that this newly married couple move into this house and he slowly does things to manipulate her sense of reality um, to make her go crazy so that he can eventually commit her to an institution so he can steal the family treasure. So that's where the term originated from that movie and then it later became a psychological term. Okay, so I looked up the word gaslighting and Wikipedia provided this and I'm going to read it to you. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or a group covertly sows seeds of doubt in a targeted individual or a group, making them question their own memory, perception, or judgment. It may evoke changes in them such as low self-esteem, rendering the victim additionally dependent on the gaslighter for emotional support and validation. Using denial, misdirection, contradiction, and misinformation, gaslighting involves attempts to destabilize the victim and delegitimize the victim's beliefs. Wow, now that was quite the description. Now the narcissist has learned to do this technique for years and years, from an early age even. So they've gotten pretty adept at it through repetition and learning to read what your weaknesses are, what your possible shortcomings are, what your beliefs are, and that kind of thing. And when you think about a person that is interested in that kind of, that level of manipulation and control and conniving, you just have to look for that, that nearest exit and run when you become aware, cognizant that this individual, this narcissist, is that full of hate for you that they would stoop and go that far to make you go crazy, or what I like to call it, crazy making. So basically the bottom line is this. The narcissist uses gaslighting to maintain, to control you and to maintain their perceived idea of being superior and in the top position, if you will, over you. And so he or she works hard to try to alter your perception first and foremost of yourself. I mean, you may have gone into this, this uh, I was gonna say situationship because that's all it is. A relationship is where two people are relating to each other, right? Consideration, communication, respect not with a narcissist. So when you first enter this situationship, you know, you're you're like self-confident and you know, sure yourself and you know, you know what value you bring to the table and you're all over it, right? You're the empath, you're the good person, you're the Christian. However, the agenda of the narcissist is to change all that for you, right? In you for him or her so that they can feel like they have control over you and they work very, very hard at this. And at first, their techniques are very subtle. They're not gonna come right out and start, you know, pointing fingers at you, you're crazy, you're crazy. No, at first, it's like little subtle, little, little drops, little seeds, right? Little seeds of thought. And just to kind of get you to go, hmm, did, did he or she just say that? I, they probably didn't mean to say that, right? But over time, the comments get less and less subtle and more and more blatant. So the narcissist will try initially to look for any little 
loopholes in your personality, any little weaknesses, any little shortcomings, and they, he or she will record them in their mind and then they will play out on those weaknesses and really build them up and make them into something much bigger than they really are. I mean, let's face it, we all have a little bit of doubt that's healthy because, you know, if we thought we were perfect like the narcissist, right? God help us. <laughs> when we, we understand being self-aware, self-discipline, self-regulating, and self-evaluating ourselves, right? We understand that that's so that we can become a better person. We understand we are a work in progress. However, the narcissist is looking for any little tiny weakness you may have, and that is what they're going to use as ammo. So they will use all kinds of tricks and lies and deceptions to do that. And why do they do that? They do it so they can confuse you, right? And throw you off balance. And as I said, initially, it's a bit subtle, but then once they see that you're kind of, your head's a little spinning, they will go harder and faster to gain more traction. And they will tell lies to your children, if you have any with the narcissist, to your family, to your friends, to your coworkers, your neighbors, why? So that they can eventually have everybody turn against you and isolate you to where the narcissist will tell you, well, I'm the only one you have now. So that's another form of isolating you. One is actually physically isolating you by moving to a whole nother state or even another country but then there's that mental and emotional isolation that they will do as well to get their disillusioned control over you. So we're going to look at some phrases, actually quite a few phrases that the narcissist will use on you to try to get to gaslight you, to confuse you, and to break you down. So, I'm going to list 16 phrases or remarks that the narcissist will use and I'm sure you can think of many more and if you can write them down below in the comments section so that other people who read your comments will go they'll have their own aha moment when they go wow so that's what he or she was doing when he or she said that to me so number one stop being so dramatic Number two, I didn't say that, you're misremembering. Number three, I didn't do that, you're misremembering. Number four, you always get confused. Number five, you know how your mind doesn't work sometimes. Number six, you're crazy, everyone knows that. Number seven, you forget everything. Number eight, I have to remind you about everything. Number nine, why don't you leave the remembering to me? Number 10, I don't want to sound mean, but you're really stupid. Hmm. Number 11, everyone knows how you're an airhead. Number 12, Everyone agrees with me that your mind is fried. Number 13, you're such an outcast. It's a good thing you have me. Number 14, you're so insecure. Number 15, it was a joke. It wasn't real. Number 16, you're making that up. You're lying. Do any of those sound familiar to you? I'm sure you were doing a mental check, check, check mark on many of these phrases and can think, of course, of many more phrases that they use. So eventually what happens? Over time, you eventually believe that you're not very good at remembering. You start to second guess yourself and you start scratching your head and going, Am I really going crazy? Is there something wrong with my memory? 
you know, and being that empath, that good person, that Christian, you always want to believe the best about that person that you've built your love around. So you've grown to trust them, you love them, you want to protect them, you even start to excuse them, your abuser, and you start to think, well, well, maybe it is me. Maybe it's just all me. Then the third thing that eventually happens is you lose all sense of your confidence in yourself and you literally begin to rely on the narcissist. You, you underlyingly believe that you really can't remember things. So you start to look to him and or her. And that's exactly what they want you to do so that they feel again like they're in control, they're in the superior position. The fourth thing that starts to happen is that you struggle to make decisions on your own and eventually you're going to the narcissist to help you make decisions or to make the decisions to get advice or even get permission. So you no longer feel that you can even make a decision on your own. The fifth thing that eventually happens is that you just feel like you can't do anything right anymore, at least not on your own, and you start to withdraw from family and friends because you are in a state of confusion in your mind and you don't even feel confident being with the people you used to love to associate with. The sixth thing that happens to you is you get guilt-ridden, like, you know, what has happened to me? I, I used to be so good at this and so good at that. And I, I was able to do this type of job and, you know, communicate this type of goals and vision. Now I can barely get through a day without doubting myself. And you become very guilt ridden and you begin to feel very, very helpless. And the seventh thing that eventually happens is that ultimately you begin to question your own sanity. You're beginning to think, am I going crazy? Maybe I really am. Maybe he or she is right. Hmm. And so it's almost, you know, like I call it brainwashing, crazy making. These are sick and devious things that the narcissist does and they do it to dominate you, control you, manipulate you, to feed their own sick ego. So when you find yourself in that type of a situation with the narcissist who is trying to just demean you and bring you into a helpless state, there's six things that I'm going to tell you that you need to do. And the first one is, detach, remove yourself from that situation. And that is number one. You cannot begin to go on your healing journey in any way, shape or form if you are still under that situationship, if you're still under that, that spiritual and psychological warfare with the narcissist. So you need to remove yourself and I understand if you are married, you have kids, or you just are under the same house with your children, there are ways that you can at least gray rock or just give, you know, just answer questions that need to be addressed without any emotion involved so that you can start taking some time to do you. And the next thing I want you to do immediately is set or rebuild your boundaries, rebuild stronger boundaries and stick with them. Learn to say no to the narcissist. Boundaries help to protect your power. I want you to understand that and know that whenever it is another thing that the narcissist does is they chisel away at your boundaries and many times they'll bulldoze your boundaries. So I want you to learn how to set those up, restructure them so they're nice and strong, rebuild them, and learn how to just say no. And then the third thing I want you to do is I want you to develop daily positive self-talk. 
you understand what the self-talk is. You know the times when, you know, you kind of beat yourself up and you're talking about, oh, why did I do that? Or why did he or she do that? Maybe you're reliving a horrible situation, which would be like your time with the narcissist, right? And you're talking about, I want you to stop doing that because all that is doing is is fanning the fire inside of you, that anger fire, that confused and bitter fire. I want you to start talking positive affirmation to yourself. Remind yourself what you were like before you were in that situation with the narcissist. You were full of joy and happiness and peace and you were a helpful person kind you were generous and that's who you're you're going to become all those and more as you begin to develop your self-talk and then the fourth thing that i want you to do is practice mindfulness think about what you're doing and you know what start a journal it just takes a few minutes every day jot down the key points of that day you don't have to list everything that you did no say these were my happy moments these were my troublesome moments and these were moments of question what however you want to list it but it only takes a few minutes that way and be sure to date each day that way when you get questioned at any time you can go check your diary your journal and that is a good way to keep that mindfulness about yourself now the fifth thing i want you to do is you know god's word is so healing it really is and i know for myself i read the bible every day i mean that's my daily food my spiritual and mental food and then i also have certain scriptures that i just love repeating inside my head throughout the day and you know it, they help to up, uplift me they they help to direct me into a more positive way if i find myself veering left i go right when i start to go through those verses and memorize them hold them in your heart and in your head that way you can go over them anytime you want whether you're driving somewhere or cleaning the house or grocery shopping they will be already in your mind and the sixth thing that i want you to do is i want you to talk to god a lot i want you to just direct your conversation to your amazing heavenly father and he hears you he inclines his ear to your lips he is as close as your closest breath and you can just talk to him and he comforts you and he lets you he reminds you how much he loves you and cares for you so have a lot of talking and communing with God you know time with God it's not just about praying for things praying for things is important but it's also a time for praising God God you're so good to me God you watch over me God you protect me you watch over my children you, you just make sure that I'm taken care of God you know you're healing my heart you're healing just praising him as well and then just talking to him like you're his child right you are his child like a child would talk to their loving parent and spend lots of time talking to God you know I want you to recognize the spiritual battle and warfare that you were in with that narcissist it wasn't you it's not your mind you weren't going crazy it was spiritual warfare and in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places the narcissist is demonically driven and they listen to those voices in their ear and we know that the devil it says in John chapter 10 verse 10 the thief the thief being the devil cometh not but for to steal kill and destroy but I am come speaking of Jesus Christ that you may have life and have it more abundantly you have gotten your life back you always had that Holy Spirit in there when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord 
and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead and became born again. But now the, de the devil, the narcissist who's listening to demonic devilish voices wanted to steal that from you, steal your joy, steal your peace, steal that inner calm and that, that spirituality about you. But now you're going to go back on your path of truth and righteousness. That's right. Because you recognize the MO of the narcissist and you are not going to tolerate that anymore. Look, we have an enemy and that enemy is the devil. And it's a real battle out there. But you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's why in this channel, in these videos, I give you plenty of word of God, plenty of scripture so you can arm yourself and wield that sword of the spirit. And there's a verse in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. It says, stay alert. Watch out for that great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That's spiritual warfare. That's right. And so you need to be prepared and you need to be armed. And there's another verse in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Now, if you think that, oh my gosh, I'm too afraid, Nanette, you know, I don't know if I could do this. What if I really don't have a sound mind? And oh my gosh, I don't know what, you know what? You're going to love this verse. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's right. Once you get God's word back in track in your thinking, in your mind, and you go, you, you lift up your, your chest and your shoulders are back and you say, I know what you're about, narcissist. I know what you're trying to do. Back off. I have Holy Spirit. I have my Heavenly Father. I have the sword of the Spirit. I have my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's right. And you are going to be put back right on that pure and righteous path. And you know what? You're going to use lots of wisdom. That's right. And where that narcissist was trying to tell you you don't have a mind or you're crazy or you're helpless. You know what? Push him back, push him back, push him way back, right? And we're going to bring in, bring in, bring in God's mighty word. I want to leave you with this verse in James chapter 1 verse 5. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. That's right. Ask God for that wisdom that you need. He will abound it to you liberally because he loves you many times beyond our comprehension. But his love is great and his love is mighty and his love is everlasting. So share this information with other people you know who are going through narcissistic abuse or recovery. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video and be sure to leave your comments. Remember other phrases that you have been said to you and other scripture that has helped you to get back on your healing journey. And all of the, the comments that you guys leave are wonderful because they are helping and encouraging other people that that will read your comments as well. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.